Hi, I'm Tim Holy. Today is September 14th, 2015, and I'm going to be demonstrating some of the newest interactive features in the Immerse package. We're going to be working today with a data set I've already loaded into memory here. Um, it's known as the Olivetti Faces database, and um, to give you a sense for the structure of this data set, I'm going to just walk you through it. Whoops. Um, and um, what these are is a series of grayscale images of individual people. So they're all the same size. Each person's photographed in 10 separate poses. So here you can see the 10 poses corresponding to this person. Here's another person in 10 different poses. And we can let it play through <coughs> all 10 of these or, all, or the whole data set while we talk about other things. So if you're writing a face recognition algorithm, for example, you might want to have some sense, for instance, for how discriminable these different individuals are. And while this is far from the state of the art in face recognition, for today's purposes, we're just going to perform a simple linear discriminant analysis uh, on these individual uh, uh, people. So using the known class label, their known identity, uh, in, uh, as part of the LDA. I've already actually computed that LDA just to show you the uh, uh, that's stored here in a data frame. So there's 400 rows corresponding to the 400 separate images in the data set. Uh, each one has been projected down into two dimensions, component one and component two, and the group label, class label, is assigned to each one of these things. We're going to plot this now using Gadfly. We'll assign this to a uh, uh, plot to a variable in case we want to display it again later. We can just type P. Um, and so we'll plot the data frame. Along the x-axis, we're going to put component 1. Along the y-axis, we're going to put component 2. We're going to color each point by its group label. So color equals group. And we have to say geom.point. Now, we're going to be doing something today that actually benefits from us being able to give a name to each sort of graphical object on the screen. And so you can do that with a new feature in Gadfly, assigning a tag to it. And let's just call this plot, th this object on the plot dots. There's only one, going to be one object in the plot, but in general, this is something you <coughs> might need to do. And so here you can see the plot created by Gadfly. It's an attractive looking plot, series of 400 dots. Each one of them is color coded by the, by the group label. Nice and easy. Okay, so if you wanted to try to start understanding, for instance, why, you know, say this dot of one group label is close to this dot of another group label, you might want to go back to and look at the raw images. Now each one is given a unique color and so in principle you could look up the group label by this scale here, but there are so many of these different um, group labels and the colors aren't so different from one another that you know I would feel all that confident about trying to match this up against here and then figuring out which image that might correspond to. It would be an awful lot more convenient if we could say just click on a single dot and actually have it show that image to us. That's the domain of something called the hit testing where you're finding out which graphical entity corresponds to the location in the screen where you clicked. Immerse contains a function already built in to do that and it's called appropriately enough hit. And you can see the help here for hit, um, but um, it actually has a very simple syntax here. What you do is for the particular figure, so we're working here with figure number one, so figure one, and then the tag, and we assigned that dots tag there, so dots. We now assign what action we want to happen when, when we, the user clicks on one of the dots in that dots object. Um, so I already have a, a nice function written for doing that that displays the displays the image in a window. It's this show image function. You can see it takes two inputs, the images variable, which is a global we've already stored, which we'll use that global we've already stored, and the index here. So if we just simply do that. Now you can see the callback should have four variables, fig, tag, this is just the figure and tag label here. It's passing that back because if you have, for instance, one callback function that can work on many figures at once, you want to be able to identify exactly where everything came from. 
the index corresponds to the index of the object the user clicked on. X, Y is the exact positions of the mouse click um, in case you want to do something really fancy. And the distance specifies the distance between the object and where you clicked. You don't want something to happen, for instance, if the user clicks out here in the white space, for instance. You want them to get at least close enough to the dot to do something. And so now we're going to do this and let's say we give the user a little bit of slack we say if distance is less than two meaning if the d user has to click within two pixels of the dot for it to count as a click and now we remind ourselves again how we display the image show image images show image images and then now the index so that's this variable right here um, and end okay and that would be the end there okay so that's pretty easy Let's see how well this worked. So if we click here on this dot, we can see, voila, a nice face pops up, another one of the same person. If we plop on this one, you can see it's a dot belonging to a different person. All right. So that's already very nice. This, this gives us an ability to go backwards from things that are rendered on the screen to the original object that underlies them. One of the things that you might want, however, is the ability to work on um, several objects at once. And that's where this new button here you see on the toolbar, this lasso selection tool, comes in. By default, what this lets you do is it lets you select a, uh, uh, draw a particular region here. So if we click that down and we just draw on the canvas, we can do this. You don't even have to really close it. And what we will do is it'll pop up by default a little dialog that tells you um, uh, a very asks you for a variable name that you want to export this to. So let's call our variable which dots and we say store. And now here, if on the command line we type which dots, you can see that our selection result has been stored here. So this dots object here, again, corresponds to the tag we assigned to those particular entities. And here's the list of, of point indexes that um, were enclosed within that region we circled. So you can now use this variable, of course, and do some custom analysis right here from the REPL command line. You might, in a more graphical oriented application, you actually might want something different to happen. You might, for instance, want to display all those images within your selection or run some predefined analysis so that you don't have to actually type something every single time you do that. And that's, again, something that's quite easy to achieve. Um, you can essentially change what happens when you click on the lasso button. And so that's a function called lash, lasso initialize. Here's the help for that. And you can see that to call that, you say lasso initialize. You give the figure number, so that's one, of course, here. And then now the callback function. And you can see that um, it gives a couple of possible sort of ways in which you could write that callback. We can make use of the simple version here because there's only, only these dots are the only things here in our plot. We don't have lines and bars and things like that. So you can see it's, this callback should take two parameters. So figno, again, the figure number, selections. And in this case, what we might want to do, is, let's say, is show all of the images inside of our selections. So again, we remind ourselves we have this show images function, and we pass the indexes as the second element there. So we might say uh, show images, um, uh, images, and then the index of. Now we have to extract the indexes from the selections here, and th this actually, in general, returns a dictionary from elements in your graphical plot to the selection indexes. And in this case, we can just essentially copy paste this, the simple case here that if you only have one object, you can just take the, take the first one here. And so um, there we've defined our, our callback function that should work on the lasso. Let's test it out and see how well it works. So we draw a lasso around these objects here. And if voila, we can see another window pop up. And so you can see these are the ones that are corresponding to one of those two individuals. And here's the other one. And in this case, you can see the reason, presumably, that these ended up close to each other is because both of these people have facial hair. OK, that covers uh, the new interactive features of 